It was October of 1593. A soldier stood guard in the Plaza Mayor in Zocalo, Mexico City, Mexico, then known as New Spain. Normally, that wouldn't have been out of place, but it was his uniform that grabbed everyone's attention. It was the wrong one. You see, he was wearing the uniform of the soldiers based in the Philippines, in the Spanish colony of Manila. He went from merely drawing eyes to drawing suspicion, and soon, the local regiment apprehended him. His explanation for how he got to Mexico City from Manila, which was over 14,000 kilometers away, depended on which version of the story you've heard. In one version, he leaned against a wall to rest his eyes after feeling nausea, and opened his eyes again to find himself in Mexico. In another version, it didn't even occur to him how it happened, and he acknowledged it without a second thought until the Mexico City authorities questioned him about it. The news caught the attention of pretty much the entire colonial authority, and the soldier soon found himself talking to the Viceroy of New Spain at the time, Luis de Velasco y Castilla. The authorities detained him for interrogation, where he correctly answered all of their questions about Spain and the Spanish military. He even knew many specific details about the Spanish regiment based in the Philippines. He claimed that Governor Gomez Perez das Mareñas had been assassinated that day by Chinese pirates. This lets us pinpoint the exact day of his appearance in Mexico to October 25th, 1593. Not sure of what to do with him, and with no way to corroborate his story, he was put in prison for anywhere between 4 to 13 months, depending on the version of the story you heard. A later version claimed that the Viceroy handed him over to the Spanish Inquisition, who put him in a prison in Santo Domingo in the Caribbean for witchcraft and working with the devil. The following year, in 1594, a ship arrived from the Philippines. The crew confirmed that Governor Das Mareñas died in October of 1593 to Chinese pirates. An officer of the Filipino crew recognized the imprisoned soldier and said that he was one of the men who had gone missing around that time. In the version where he had been sent to the Caribbean, he was recalled to Mexico while the Filipino crew waited. They put him on the ship back to the Philippines, and that's where the story ends. Most versions of this story that you'll find today have given the soldier a name. Gil Perez, but he was actually unnamed in the earliest versions of the story. In Gaspar de San Agustin's 1698 book, The Conquest of the Philippine Islands, he states, The same day that the tragedy of Gomez Perez happened, the fact was learned in Mexico by the art of Satan. Transplanted to the Plaza de Mexico, a soldier who was making a post one night in a garrison of the Wall of Manila, that in the morning they found him marching in the Plaza de Mexico, asking the name of passers-by. But Gaspar de San Agustin's book was written over a hundred years after the fact. Surely there was some report of it earlier and it wasn't totally made up, right? Well, about that. Antonio de Morga, a well-known historian from the Spanish colonization era, allegedly mentioned the story in his book titled the Events in the Philippine Islands, published in 1609, a mere 15 years after the event. Furthermore, José Rizal, a Filipino revolutionary and writer, republished Morga's book in 1890, fact-checking and annotating much of what the book claimed. When it came to the story of the soldier, Rizal made an interesting annotation. Morga, perhaps because he does not give credence to such facts, not only does not mention them, but says later that the news was not known until Juan de Yelasco came in the month of November 1594, that is, 13 months later. Rizal implied that Morga, for whatever reason, covered up the story of the soldier and that Mexico didn't learn about the governor's death until late the next year. Why would he do that? Well, I think the explanation is quite simple. Rizal read San Augustine's book and fully believed the story to be fact, when in truth, the story didn't exist until 1698. He had looked at the source of his source, and while both Morga and San Augustine were historians, San Augustine was probably the one who made up the story. 
Another source I looked at claimed that San Augustine said he wrote it down after hearing of it from others in the Philippines, to which he arrived in 1667, about 30 years before he wrote his book. Either way, Gaspar de San Augustine had a major role in the urban legend becoming widespread, even though I personally do believe that he heard it through word of mouth. Most later retellings, such as the ones by Luis González Obregón, Washington Irving, Thomas Janvier, and Morris Jessup all cite San Augustine's book, which took a creative liberty while citing Morga's book. What could have spurred the urban legend in the first place? Well, a few things from my search come to mind. Jose Rizal's republication established that the story originated in the Philippines and moved to Mexico, not the other way around. According to Bartolomé Leonardo de Argensola, another Spanish historian, Governor Gómez Pérez das Mareñas was a somewhat controversial figure. The Spanish colonies in both Mexico and the Philippines were going through a satanic panic of sorts at the time. There was word that Das Mareñas didn't get along with the Bishop of Manila, Domingo de Salazar, and was pushing for the state to have more control over the church. Argensola, as well as other documents, also suggest that Das Mareñas was killed in the middle of the night while his ship was moored off the coast of Luzon, about 135 kilometers away from Manila. If that were true, then it would have been impossible for anyone in Manila to have known the governor was dead the same day he was killed, or even in the days that followed. If I had to take a guess, there was a larger plan in motion when the Chinese pirates assassinated Das Mareñas, and that the story of a random soldier happening to know of the governor's death before anyone else was someone involved in that conspiracy accidentally spilling the beans and trying to cover it up. I think we can say with reasonable confidence that a soldier didn't teleport to the other side of the world in 1593. But it's fascinating how stories like these get passed down over time and hearing the changes added by each new storyteller. Did you like hearing about one of Mexico's oldest urban legends? Like and subscribe for more content on urban legends, mysteries, and the paranormal. Thank you for watching and have a lovely night.